So, you want to learn parkour? Well, it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of stamina, and you clicked on the wrong video. Hey guys, one bad test by Kai Kai, and today we are back once again. It's been such a long time since we've been in Mixed Craft, but we're back in Mixed Craft today. I wanted to talk a little bit about my favorite VST, uh, Serum. Uh, I will leave the link down in the description. It is not free. It's not a free VST. It does cost quite a bit of money, actually, but it's one of my favorite VSTs. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and hit this little thing over here, and then go to VSTI Instruments, and then we're we'll scroll on down until we get to Serum. We're gonna click that, and then we're gonna, it's gonna open up here. And this is what it looks like. It's basically just a uh, like it's it's basically a virtual synth. So um, the reason it's so good is because you can create anything you want with it, and a lot of synths you. You can only create bases or leads or whatever have you, but Serum you can do literally anything, and they have, they have so many different uh, options here and so many different uh, buttons and switches and whatnot. So I'm gonna really quickly break down why I love this um, so much. So if I play this this by default, it sounds like this. So not not exactly the coolest thing, but there's a lot of things we can do depending on what sound you want. So. Um, the first thing you usually do is you're going to go up here to this oscillator section. So we have two oscillators. We have oscillator A and oscillator B. Now, if we check this one on, you can see it basically just sounds louder because they're the same exact thing with the same exact setting. So it just kind of makes it sound louder because it's just two of the same thing. Um, imagine you took your voice and then just doubled it like right now. And then like it, it sounds just like this is louder. You know what I mean? Like that, that's all it sounds like. So um, let's uncheck that for now. For now, we're only going to use this one oscillator A. But I'm going to do a couple things to it. So maybe you want this to sound a little bit more big. So let's go ahead and real quick, before I do this, let's actually make a um, MIDI uh, uh, note chain, whatever you want to call it. Um, let's go ahead and just double click in this uh, serum uh, line right here and just drag that out to like bar five or something. And then we will go ahead and um, I right click this and go to mix to new clip. So now that now it's five bars long. You can also do that by dragging this line down here. Um, to like nine or to five or whatever, but that's also another way to do it. Um, I'm gonna go to this little button right here, which is the draw boat button that adds notes. Um, we'll just make a nice simple little like melody. It's not gonna be super crazy. It's just gonna be like um, something so we can tell what it sounds like. You know what I mean? Just something like this. Just like <laughs> it's just actually terrible, but. It's just for right now so we can see what the heck this sounds like. So I'm going to go ahead and drag my cursor from all the way from 5 to 1 and hit L on our keyboard to loop that. Now if we play this, you can see that it'll loop. So there we go. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. Um, it doesn't sound the coolest, but it actually reminds me of The Legend of Zelda, and I don't know why. Um, but we'll go ahead and uh, right-click this little button again to open Serum back up. Now we can change what this sounds like a bit. So we'll loop that and have that play a little bit. I'm going to turn my volume down for this so it's not super loud. And we can just have that go a little bit. All right. So I'm going to change this. First of all, we're going to change up the number of unison. So if I change the number of unison here, you can see that what this is going to do, it's going to make it sound like it's a little distorted, but not distorted. Well, it's going to sound like it's wider because now we have more voices. Essentially, what this is, is that like, imagine you have a choir of people and now there's four people uh, standing there instead of just one. And now imagine there's six people and then there, imagine now there's 16 people. So 16 is kind of high. We're just going to go with something. Um, I usually go with even numbers. So we're going with seven. So we have one in the center. Um, then we can change the detune value to make them either more further spread apart or closer together. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. Uh, think of the higher detune, like people are singing in really, really, really different keys. And then uh, the closer the detune, the, the closer everyone is singing the same exact key. So it sounds like more like one voice rather than a lot of voices. So I'm going to put that about right here. You can play this, you can see what it sounds like. And that's basically what it does. If we change the detune... Oh, God. Let me put it down. It gets more and more singular again. There you go. So now that kind of reminds me of the 80s right there. That's kind of what a lot of synths in the 80s sound like. It's just that straightforward. But um, maybe you don't want such a hard sound. Let's go ahead and change the sound by clicking Default and then just dropping down here to Analog, Digital, Spectral, 
or um, Val, you probably don't have any users uh, because this is, you know, you, you didn't make custom ones yet. But let's go to analog and a really basic, smooth sound um, oscillator is analog BD sine. So you can see that it makes the curve really, really smooth. So if you play this now, you can see much better, much smoother, much nicer. All right, cool. So that's nice. That's really nice. That's really nice. Now what we're going to do is because this is just a lead and we're not making chords, I'm going to check on this little sing, uh, solo button, mo sorry, solo mono button down here to make it to make sure that we can only uh, hear one note at a time. Because if we had a really long decay on this, which we're about to do in a second, you'll see that they will overlap and things will start getting kind of muddy. So let's really quickly go ahead and change this envelope. So the envelope down here is what determines the shape of the sound like how the sound the tail of the sound the attack of the sound so it's going to kind of shape the overall sound not just not just what it sounds like which is this uh, oscillator up here so for instance if i turn the attack up let me play this you can hear how it takes longer to come in rather than just popping in right right um, if I turn down the sustain, it won't, it won't, it will no longer like hold the note. It'll just be like a little pluck. There we go. Cool. Now, maybe I wanted some uh, release on this. So release is basically if I press a button, that's how long it's going to go out for. So if I put it all the way up to five seconds, you can hear that, that tail is super long. It's like, but if I make a really short sustain, uh, sorry, release, it sounds like this. Boop, boop. You know, so it's 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 a nice balance. I'm gonna put this somewhere around like maybe like 1.5 seconds or something like that. 1.5 seconds somewhere around there. Um, you can change this curve as well to make the curve different, so you can make this even shorter like this. There you go. Or you can make this curve bigger so that it has uh it has more of an uh, more of a round arc like that which I don't really like so I'll just kind of put it back down to where it started now you don't want to go with the zero attack because if you do you'll start getting this little clicking you hear that clicking at the beginning I don't know if you can hear that clicking at the beginning of the note but um, if you put this on somewhere around like three milliseconds you should be good you can probably even do two actually to be honest with you so yeah as long as you have this up a little bit you should be fine all right um, something else we can do really quickly is um, now if you if you didn't have mono on, listen to this with mono on, right? What you should notice is that all of these notes that are glumped together, when a new one starts, the release of the old sound, the, the old note stops. But this one, because there's no other note after it, it will continue to go on. So listen to this. Listen closely here. You hear how that all these notes have no release tail, but this one goes fully out. That's what we like to see. Now, if I uncheck mono, you can hear what it sounds like. You can hear all the release times on all of the notes, which is nice for this specific example. But for many examples, you're going to want to turn on um, mono because it will start to overlap. But this actually sounds good and really dreamy and spacious, so I like it. I'm going to leave the mono off for this. Now, um, something else we can do is we can turn up the uh, the octave up or down. So if I put this up by one, it's higher. If I click and drag down to negative one, it's lower. There we go. We can mess with the, uh, the semitone as well. Put this up to seven, which is also nice um, if you want to do that. But we're not going to do that right now, so I'll put that back to zero. Um, there's so many things we can do with these LFOs. These LFOs are nice tools to use. I'll, I'll demonstrate very quickly. So um, let's say you wanted to change some more of these parameters. So we, right now we have detune, which we already went over. We have blend, which is basically just making the one in the center stand out more, as you can see. So it makes that one louder or, or, or puts it in the back. I'm going to put that back where it was. Um, the phase, you're not really going to use that too much with a noise like this. Now, if you have a special, um, a special oscillator, something like... Like this one, like a matrixy C64, uh, the phase is going to determine where your sound kind of starts at. So you can see, if I put it about right here and play it, it sounds a little different than if I put it right here. So it, so you can see if I have this like fade, if we, okay, if I play this, 
Hmm. Let's put that right there. So if I have the phase, oh, pause. If I have the phase right there, you can see what it's going to do is it's going to start from this this piece right here. It's going to start from right here. If I put it over here, it'll start from right here. Um, so that's that's basically what phase is. It doesn't do. You're not probably going to use phase too much, but it's just nice to have. Uh, random. It's just the, how random the phase is. Don't worry about that. But the wavetable position is a great 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 uh tool and you'll see what this does in a moment you can see when i when i pull this up it changes the sound and morphs it so let's go back to analog bd sine wave and if i change the wavetable position of this all the way up you can see it kind of gets a little it gets a little more gritty like it's not just a smooth like woo, you know what i mean it's like a it's like a you know what i mean like that so if i turn that up uh that's nice but maybe i want to like animate this this knob so it moves a little bit like the whole time so it like so it sounds nice and and and, and variated we can do that let's grab the lfo tool and then just uh, plop that right there and click and drag that onto this wavetable position now you can see when i play this you hear that and you see this little line moving on the lfo tool as well look at that see now we can change this a little bit by tr by turning on envelope which means every single time a note is triggered then it will repeat this instead of just repeating over and over again you see it's just repeating randomly right but it, this with envelope on it'll repeat only every time a note is played you see how it starts again there we go so it's now now it's consistent which is what we like to see now we can change the rate to make it faster the no, notes going the line's going around faster or you can make it slower so you can turn it to two bars and make it really slow as you can see so that's really cool as well you can turn on triplet time you can turn on dot time you can turn off the bpm and just have it as a hertz thing so that it, it goes on a specific time um there's a lot of things you can do now this this is great for many different things which we'll probably get into in another tutorial but for now just for the basics uh that's basically lfos you can grab grab this and make custom shapes double click a line to change it you can arch these these lines as well very very cool stuff very cool stuff. Your own custom sounds, and then you can turn it up. There we go. Very cool. So that is LFO tools. It's very useful for a lot of different things. Um, we the filter, obvious. You, you can just filter some things out. You can change different uh, types of filters, which is nice. The LFO tool is great for this for plucks. There we go. There we go. So just put that on there and then just adjust this little blue knob right here. And then you can just change how far. So basically, this little starting point is where the filter starts at, at the bottom, right? So it, it, this is all the way off, right? And then the tip top up here is how far it goes up. That's how much you want to include in the, in the filter spectrum. So essentially, all the way up means there's no filter. All the way down means the whole filter, it, the whole thing is being filtered out. So that that's basically what that is. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now, uh, quickly, the oscillator B is very handy. If you wanted to check that on really quickly, you can see if I if I play this now, you can hear that second sound. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bump up the unison and turn the detune down a little bit, and we're gonna make this um, an octave up. And we'll play it again. So now we have two distinct sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the volume of the first oscillator up. Um, in the set in the second oscillator volume down a little bit because um, this one's too loud now I do want to change the default so we'll change this to basic shapes and then we'll change the wavetable position and now what this is gonna do is gonna give us multiple different shapes we can use I'm gonna use this shape I believe so if I play this very very similar to the default we can use this one as well actually yeah I like that one better all right cool that's that now this this button in the center obviously pan is pan like panning to the left and right. You can write if you want to redo any like if you've messed something up and want to put it back to how how it was default. Right click it and press reset control. And that's super simple. This thing in the middle here that says off. If you click the off, it will give you a bunch of different options that look kind of confusing. But all you need to know is that these change the sound. So let's for instance let's go ahead and and turn on mirror. Now you can see it's just mirrored our sound and we can just move it around like this. So if I play it, the sound changes if I move it. Now we have multiple different things in here. We have bend plus and minus, which is basically just going to bend our sound. So it started off like this, right? And then we can make it go out 
or we can make it go in. Just a lot of different things just to make the sound sound a bit different. And this is great for uh, using a UFO tool. We can, we can uh, a UFO, a UFO tool, wow, an LFO tool. We can go ahead and use this second LFO because this one's untouched. This We're already using this one, so we have to make another one. So the second LFO tool, we can just drag that onto the bend and play it. And as you can see, let me turn the rate down. This now sounds different because we have this constantly evolving and changing. We can add the same one to this over here. And instead of doing bend plus and minus, we can do something different, which is FM from B. Now, if I let me uncook this real quick. So if I play this, what this is doing is taking, it doesn't really make too much sense, but all these ones that say from B is taking oscillator B and kind of mixing it in a very peculiar way with A. So you'll see when I, when I, I'm going to play this and we'll, we'll pull the knob up and you can, you can hear what it does. So let's play this real quick. I pull it up. So that's basically what it does. It's very cool. Now we have FM, we have AM, which does a similar thing. Which sounds a little different. And then we finally have RM, which is not used as much. Because it sounds basically the same as the other two. Alright, so um, now that that's taken care of, I'm going to go ahead and put that on there as well. Now, finally, the last thing I want to talk about for today, um, there's a lot of other things that we can talk about, but for today, I want to talk about the FX section. This is a very, very unique section, very good section. This is what you're going to want to go to to polish off your sounds. Let's go ahead and play this, and let's add a couple of different things, and then I'll go ahead and go through and talk about them. So um, these are basically just effects that in, in CRM effects that you don't have to do um, third-party other VSTs or anything like that. So this is very cool. Let's play this, and I'm just going to do a couple things here. So, I've added a couple of effects here, as you can see. Uh, quite a bit of effects, actually. You wouldn't, you most likely wouldn't do all of it. Well, maybe. Depending, it depends on what sound it is. But we have some hyper, some distortion, some chorus, some delay, and compressor, reverb, and flanger. You can basically guess what all of these do. But just really quickly, um, essentially what I've done is the big, the, a big change is this multi-band right here. So I turned the compressor on, and then I checked multi-band, which means multi-band compressor, which just kind of makes it really hyper compressed so all of these knobs are pretty straightforward like gain obviously that just makes it louder release that just changes the release time this is a standard compressor here um, now if you click these you can go to them easier distortion of course it just distorts it hyper dimension is very unique so if I change this uh, mix up let me put it on zero you can kind of hear it getting a little wider but we already have it pretty wide from the unison so it's not going to do too much let's turn the size up a little bit um, and the mix for the unison over here on that as well. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Chorus is always a great sound for like bubbly, like plucks, I suppose. It always adds a nice little vibe to it. Uh, you can change the delay time from left and for left and right to eighth. You can do them separately, which is really cool. So left and right have a different uh, value. Turn the mix up a little bit. Pretty cool. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's basically it for a, a whole serum kind of overview. The matrix over here is just an easy way to see everything that you have linked. So all of your, um, all the, the times that we have uh, linked something to a destination. So when we put this LFO tool on the wavetable position and on the chorus, and then this one on the two, um, these two values right here. So it's just an easy way to see everything that you've done. Um, which is really really cool now uh, you can change this type really quickly you can change this type from this straight line to a line that goes back and forth so it goes from left to right instead of just going to right click it again goes left to right now what this does is as you can see if I were to go ahead and which one was that which one did I just change wavetable position LFO1 
Okay. All right. So cool. So if I change this, you can see now what this is. There's a line going both directions instead of just going to the, to the right like this one. See the see how this one's different? Like this line just goes to, from to the right off of this white little piece. But this one doesn't do that. And when I change this blue down, it goes both sides at the same time. So that's really, really unique if you want it to go across back and forth like that. So we'll leave it on that for a little bit and then we'll play this. Super simple, super nice. Of course you have sub oscillator over here. Like I said, this is all stuff for a another day in specific. But ladies and gentlemen, that uh, is basically it. Legato over here and uh, Portamento. And if you check always, then it'll always have Portamento. Hear that? And then this this value determines how slidey it'll be. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to turn down some of this stuff because it's difficult to hear. But yeah, I will uh, see you ladies and gentlemen in the next tutorial. We need to do more mixed craft tutorials because I really enjoy these. Um, just a super simple, straightforward one today. But I will see you next time. Uh, peace out. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys uh, next time. I've said that like six times. Bye-bye. <laughs>